Halloween. It's a night filled with costumes, sweet treats and spooky decorations. But the way we celebrate now has changed significantly, leaving behind a wealth of ancient customs. You might be surprised by the forgotten rituals and strange traditions that shaped this night, dating all the way back to ancient times. Join me as we unearth the lost ways of celebrating Halloween, uncovering secrets that have been buried for centuries. Welcome back, Darklings. Halloween, as we know it today, has roots that stretch back thousands of years to the ancient Celtic festival of Samhain. Celebrated over several days, Samhain marked the end of the harvest and the beginning of winter, a time when the Celts believed the boundary between the world of the living and the dead was at its thinnest. On October 31st, spirits were said to be able to cross over into the realm of the living, walking among them for one night before returning to the other world. The Celts both welcomed and feared these spirits. They believed their deceased loved ones could return, offering blessings and guidance. But the night also brought darker forces, malevolent spirits and mischievous beings that could slip into the living realm. To protect themselves and their communities, the Celts lit large fires and burned animal bones, believing the flames would drive away evil spirits and protect their homes and livestock. This practice gave rise to the word bonfire, which originally came from bone fire. Over time, the ritual of burning bones was lost, replaced with the lighting of bonfires more generally. People would also wear disguises, made from animal skins and heads, hoping that the spirits would mistake them for fellow spirits and leave them alone. This practice is considered one of the early origins of wearing costumes during Halloween. But Halloween wasn't just about protecting oneself from wandering spirits. In some traditions, people actually invited them in and even shared a meal with the dead. In an effort to appease the spirits and ensure they didn't cause harm, people would leave food and drink outside their homes as offerings. This was a gesture of goodwill, both to honor the dead and to placate any mischievous spirits that might bring misfortune to their families or the harvest. Another way the living connected with the spirits of the dead was through a practice known as the dumb supper. Common in the UK, Ireland, and later America, this solemn tradition involved setting a table for the spirits of deceased loved ones, and the living would eat in complete silence. Chairs were often left empty, and food was placed at the table for the spirits to enjoy. It was believed that this practice allowed the dead to have one final meal before returning to the afterlife, providing a brief moment of connection between the two worlds. But while some sought connection with the spirits of the past, others looked to Halloween as a time to glimpse into the future. In Celtic and later traditions, the night was seen as a time when the boundaries between the physical and spiritual worlds blurred, allowing for glimpses of what was to come. This led to a variety of fortune-telling customs that have since faded from popular memory. One method of divination involved apple-related games, many of which originated in Ireland and Scotland, Apples were deeply symbolic, often representing the other world or the afterlife in Celtic mythology. One well-known tradition was bobbing for apples, a game that some still play today. Participants would try to catch an apple floating in water using only their mouths. If successful, it was believed that person would be the next to marry, a glimpse into their romantic future. Another popular tradition involved peeling apples. The goal was to peel the apple in one long, continuous strip, then throw the peel over your shoulder. When the peel landed, it would supposedly form the initial of your future spouse's name. In a world where matchmaking was serious business, these customs provided a little Halloween magic for those eager to know their futures. But apples weren't the only tool for predicting the future. In Scotland and England, people also used nuts for a form of fortune-telling. Couples would place two nuts in the fire, and the way they burned would reveal the fate of their relationship. If the nuts burned quietly together, it was said the couple would have a harmonious future. But if the nuts popped or exploded apart, it foretold conflict or separation. In Ireland, another practice was mirror divination. Unmarried women would stand in front of a mirror at midnight, often by candlelight, hoping to catch a glimpse of their future husband's face. The mirror was believed to act as a portal to the spirit world. These fortune-telling customs may seem unusual today, but they reflect a deeper belief in the power of Halloween as a time when the natural and supernatural were closely intertwined. 
For those who participated, the night wasn't just a celebration. It was an opportunity to unlock the mysteries of the future. As Christianity spread throughout the Celtic regions, many of the old Samhain traditions were adapted to fit the new religious framework. One of the most fascinating examples of this transformation is the tradition of souling, which directly links to the modern practice of trick-or-treating. On November 2nd, All Souls Day, the Christian Church encouraged prayers for the dead, particularly for those believed to be lingering in purgatory. It was thought that the more prayers a soul received, the faster it could ascend to heaven. People, particularly children and the poor, would go door to door offering prayers for the dead in exchange for food, usually small spiced cakes known as soul cakes. These cakes often had a cross marked on the top to signify their Christian symbolism. The idea was that in exchange for their prayers, households would provide a cake or treat, and in return, the deceased would benefit from the prayers of the living. In some regions, especially in Wales, the practice took on a darker tone. People would go door to door, not just to pray for the dead, but to invoke or placate death itself. One such chant went, Decca, Decca, come to the door and give to the messenger of death. Failure to give a cake might lead to dire consequences. In some variations, a threat of harm or even decapitation was implied, if no treat was offered. Over the centuries, this tradition evolved into what we now know as trick-or-treating. While the prayers and the idea of aiding souls in purgatory have faded, the custom of going door to door for treats persists, echoing those ancient appeals for soul cakes. Before children dressed as superheroes and witches, the tradition of guising was already a popular custom in Scotland and Ireland. Guising, short for disguising, involved children donning costumes and going house to house, but instead of simply asking for treats, they had to earn them by performing tricks or entertaining their hosts with songs, jokes or poetry. By the time Christianity had taken hold in Celtic regions, guising had evolved into children dressed as saints or angels, performing small acts in exchange for food, cakes or even coins. In Scotland, Halloween celebrations also featured masked parades and performances. One such tradition was Galoshins, a mumming play performed door to door. These plays typically reenacted a dramatic battle between good and evil, similar to old Christmas mumming traditions. Performers in elaborate costumes would act out these stories, often receiving gifts or coins in return. The parades and plays brought communities together and added a theatrical flair to the night's festivities. While these lively performances added a sense of drama and community to Halloween, other traditions focused on protecting oneself from supernatural forces, like the eerie glow of the jack-o'-lantern, a symbol whose roots lie deep in Irish folklore. One of the most iconic symbols of Halloween today is the jack-o'-lantern. Carving pumpkins into eerie faces has become synonymous with the holiday, but the origin of this tradition is steeped in Irish folklore, and it didn't start with pumpkins at all. The story begins with a character known as Stingy Jack, a clever but morally dubious man who managed to trick the devil twice. According to legend, Jack invited the devil for a drink, but didn't want to pay. He convinced the devil to turn into a coin to pay the bartender, but instead of using the coin, Jack slipped it into his pocket alongside a silver cross, trapping him. Jack eventually released the devil on the condition that he wouldn't bother him for a year and wouldn't claim his soul if he died. When the year passed, Jack tricked the devil again, this time securing ten more years of peace. However, when Jack finally died, his trickery caught up with him. Heaven wouldn't accept him, and the devil, bound by his promise, refused to take Jack's soul. Instead, Jack was condemned to wander the earth for eternity. The devil gave him only a single burning coal to light his way, which Jack placed inside a hollowed out turnip. From then on, he roamed the dark with his makeshift lantern, earning the nickname Jack of the Lantern, or Jack a Lantern. When Irish immigrants brought this story to America in the 19th century, they found pumpkins, native to North America, were larger and easier to carve than turnips. Thus, the tradition of carving pumpkins into Jack o' Lanterns was born. The frightening faces carved into these lanterns were intended to ward off evil spirits, echoing the ancient practice of protecting oneself from wandering souls during Samhain. So the next time you carve a pumpkin, remember, you're keeping the spirit of Stingy Jack and his lantern alive.
In Scotland on Halloween night, young couples would take part in a playful ritual with a fortune-telling twist, pulling up Kale, a member of the Cabbage family, to predict their future. This tradition, known as Kale pulling, was simple but symbolic. Participants would go into their garden, blindfolded, and pull the first kale plant they touched. The size, shape and condition of the kale were believed to represent the appearance or characteristics of their future spouse. A straight, tall stalk suggested a handsome partner, while a twisted or deformed one might imply someone with peculiar traits. If the kale still had plenty of earth clinging to its roots, it was seen as a sign of future wealth. Kale wasn't always the celebrated superfood it is today. In those times, it was primarily grown as animal feed, but what began as an innocent way to predict the future soon took a mischievous turn. Instead of pulling their own kale, people would sneak into their neighbours' gardens under the cover of darkness and steal theirs. These stolen plants were often hurled at houses, leaving many people waking up to find their front doors splattered with muddy kale leaves. This quirky yet disruptive tradition quickly became a hallmark of Scottish Halloween mischief. As time passed, kale throwing merged with a broader tradition known as Mischief Night, a time dedicated to pranks, tricks and general chaos. While Mischief Night became closely linked with Halloween, its origins stretch back even further. The first recorded mention of Mischief Night dates to 1583, when it was tied to the May Day celebrations. On May Day Eve, young people would bring in the May by gathering flowers and greenery for May morning, but they also played pranks, made loud noises with gunfire or horns, and engaged in other forms of rowdy behaviour. For reasons that remain unclear, Mischief Night eventually shifted from May to align with Halloween and Bonfire Night, creating an explosive evening of revelry that many adults came to dread. The night before Halloween became a time when children and young people could run wild, indulging in pranks and vandalism. While modern day pranks like toilet papering trees or egging houses seem relatively harmless, the antics of Mischief Night were often far more intense. In some areas, massive bonfires were built in the middle of the street, fueled by wood stolen from local homes. Furniture, gates and fences were taken to keep the fires roaring, and townspeople often woke to find their doors barricaded with stolen goods to prevent them from stopping the mayhem. A famous portrayal of this chaos comes from the 1944 film Meet Me in St. Louis, where children are shown throwing flour and building bonfires in the streets. Although set in the US, these scenes are reminiscent of the mischief that took place on Mischief Night in the UK, where bonfires and pranks had long been a part of Halloween festivities. As the years passed, Mischief Night began to fade, replaced by more family-friendly traditions. Yet, in many parts of the UK and the US, the night still carries an air of mischief, a lingering reminder of Halloween's wilder, rowdier past. As time passed and societal norms shifted, Halloween gradually became a more family-oriented celebration. The darker, spiritual elements gave way to costumes, suites and community gatherings, especially in the mid-20th century, when commercialization took hold. As Halloween has evolved, many of these traditions have been forgotten, but some still linger in the shadows. From carving jack-o'-lanterns to dressing up in costumes, we can still see traces of these ancient customs in our modern celebrations. So will you be reviving any of these lost traditions in your Halloween celebrations? Let me know in the comments below. And if you enjoyed uncovering Halloween's hidden past, don't forget to like, subscribe and explore my video on the world's oldest ghost story for more eerie tales. See you in a future video.